Hey, so in this video, we're going to be installing Storybook on our local machine and setting up an environment for us to start writing React components in. To get started with Storybook, we're first going to go to the official Storybook website, which is at storybook.js.org. And from here, we're met with an overview of what Storybook is and a demo video showing what the Storybook environment will look like when we get it working on our machine. Now, to get started, we're going to go over to the sidebar and select Made for React. And in this post, you can find out information about how to use the automatic setup or the manual setup. Now, to keep up the speed of the video and to keep the video short, we're going to use the automatic setup. But if you want to have a bit more of a manual configuration for your Storybook environment, then feel free to explore the manual setup yourself. And we're going to use the second command in our command line list here, which is npx with the configuration for the type React. And by copying this command line, we're going to go into our desktop and open up a command line interface. And we're going to make a new directory called storybook. And we're going to cd into the directory. And we're going to run npm init which will allow us to automatically generate a package.json file. And that looks good to me. And so we now have our package.json file, which will contain configuration around the uh, packages and dependencies we require for our project, which is what Storybook will tap into with our next command. So now we're going to run the Storybook command that we had available to us from the automatic setup. So if we paste that in, then what this will do is it will call the Storybook CLI and it will create a new initialization of a Storybook project with the type React, which will allow it to pull in the modules that are related to React and are required to get the Storybook environment running on our machine. Once that's complete and we've installed Storybook, we can run npm run Storybook. And what this will do is it will start up a local development environment for us um, and start up a server that we can access at port, thousand, port 6006. Uh, Storybook will automatically open this in your currently open browser if you have one open. Um, so as you can see, we just opened up localhost 6006 and we have access to the introduction to how Storybook works, as well as a button example which has a text example for a button and an emoji example for a button. And if we go ahead and open up a code editor and we open up the storybook folder on our desktop, then you'll see we have access to the dot storybook directory, which has configuration for our storybook environment. So we can have add-ons and make configuration settings. And we have access to stories which has access to two files. One is the welcome screen and one is the button example. And you'll notice this has a .stories.js uh, file extension, which it sort of helps name and label the stories as separate to your React components. And we have two React component examples here. One is hello button, which is the one we saw with the text button, and one is emoji. And if we change this to just a button and refresh, then when we go to text, we have just a button. So those are two demo examples, but we won't be really using them in future. But it's good to just have a quick glance at how a story is set up. Although the way we will structure stories will be slightly different, um, it's a great way of seeing how you can get up and running with React and Storybook quite quickly. Now, for the video series, we're going to be using uh, Git as version control for our Storybook environment. And so I'm going to open up a console in our directory and run git init. And there are a ton of files that we have in our project, including uh, dependencies and node modules. We don't want to commit any of those. So I've gone ahead and created a .git init um, file, which I'm going to copy and paste over into the project into a git ignore file. And we'll paste that in there. And what that'll do is it'll ignore node modules, but keep access to the other files in our project. And then we can go ahead and run git status and then git add a. 
what did I do wrong? Git add a and then git commit init project. And I'll go ahead and create a GitHub repository outside of this video, but we'll be pushing up all of the changes to that repository. And if you want to pull down that repository at any time, it'll be in the description of this video. Um, but yeah, that's about it. We've got our storybook environment running, and now we can start developing components. In the next video, we're going to be covering Brad Frost's atomic design principles and how we can apply them when writing components in our pattern library.